viewers, we bring to you the next module, Exercise and Fitness. Modern man created equipment and gadgets to do away with physical activity. He then went ahead and created more equipment and gadgets on which to practice physical activity and exercise. Ironic, isn't it now? While ancient man, a few generations ago, had physical activity as a part of his daily life, we in fact have simplified life to the point where there is no physical activity whatsoever in our life. Viewers, we bring to you the next module, Exercise and Fitness. Here, Professor Adrian Kennedy will correlate the various exercise systems from various cultures, Tai Chi from the East, we have calisthenics and aerobics from the West, the ancient system of yoga from India itself. He also correlates the virtues of exercise with disease management and brings to you a demonstration using his two coaches, Coach Adhikari and Yogacharya Zarina. There are several aspects to good health. Nutrition is one aspect, exercise is another, management of stress is, is another, avoiding dependencies like alcohol and smoking and even safety. These are all important aspects of good health. But if I were to ask what is more important, I might perhaps emphasize on exercise. Now when you exercise, you use energy, that's obvious. You are using energy from body fat and therefore you reduce body weight. When you reduce body weight, you reduce obesity. When you reduce obesity, you reduce all the diseases related to obesity. Research has indicated that individuals who exercise will not only live longer, but will also protect themselves from disease. If that is the case, how do we exercise? What are the important components of exercise? Even while there are several components of exercise, I would like to emphasize two or three of these. One is stamina. The second is strength. The third is flexibility. These are the basic components of physical fitness. What is stamina? Let us consider stamina first. What is stamina? Stamina is any exercise activity that strengthens the heart, improves the circulation, expands the lungs. Cardiovascular, heart, lungs, stamina. So how do we strengthen our heart and improve our respiration? You could do activities that increase your heart rate. For example, if you were to go for a walk, your heart rate would increase. If you were to go for a jog or cycle or swim or play games such as cricket and hockey and football, any outdoor games, your heart rate increases. When your heart rate increases, your heart muscle is strengthened. So therefore, cardiovascular means using activity to strengthen the heart. When your heart rate goes up, you automatically require more oxygen. When you require more oxygen, you breathe more deeply. When you breathe more deeply, you automatically improve your lung capacity. So cardiovascular exercise such as stamina is very important for the heart and lungs. How do we know how much of cardiovascular exercise is good for us? It goes basically according to your heart rate. The younger you are, the more intensely you can exercise. The older you are, the more moderate exercises are prescribed. For example, when you go for a walk, your heart rate will go to 120 beats a minute. Now this is excellent for older age people. What is older age? Maybe above the age of 60 is now considered old age. Anything less than 60 is middle-aged. The younger age groups below the age of 40 should then go for jogging. 
When you jog, your heart rate goes up to 160. So that is good for young people. So what would we do? Young people would go for jogging. Middle-aged people between the ages of 30 and maybe 60 should go for walk and jog. What is that? You walk for, say, about five minutes, then you jog for five minutes. Walk for five minutes, jog for five minutes. Do this about for half an hour. So that is a walk jog. Older people above the age of 60 and 70 can do brisk walking. Walking, jogging, cycling and swimming within your capacity is excellent for stamina. We then come to strength. There are two aspects to strength. You could use different methods to improve your strength. For example, you could use isometrics. What is an isometric? An isometric exercise is an exercise in which there is no body movement. You may wonder, how can I do an exercise without body movement? For example, if you are lying in bed and sick in hospital, you can do an exercise program in the hospital. This was isometric. But more precisely defined, isometric is an exercise in which the muscles go against an immovable resistance. Not a very popular form of exercise and preferably done or prescribed by doctors to individual patients who are ill. For those of us who are not ill, the normal man on the street, you and I, how can we improve our strength? There are two methods. You could use the calisthenic method. Calisthenic is where you improve your strength by using your own body weight. Weight training or gym exercises is where you strengthen your body by working in a gymnasium, by adding additional weight to the body in order to do exercise. Now, remember, there are 600 muscles in the human body. How do you strengthen 600 muscles? Keep in mind that we all have time constraints. Certainly it is not possible to strengthen 600 muscles if you take each of these muscles separately. So why not take the muscles in groups? For example, upper body, middle body or lower body. That's one way of looking at it. The other way you can look at it is upper body comprises the muscles of the arms, shoulders, chest and upper back. Middle body would comprise the abdomen and back. Lower body would comprise the thighs and the calf. So what exercises would we do in order to strengthen the body? You could do the push-up. The push-up will strengthen the arms, the chest, the shoulders and the back. In case you are a lady or in case you are unable and old perhaps, you could do the modified push-up in which you have more contact with the ground and less resistance in the arms. Then you could do, do the sit-up if you are young or the modified sit-up if you are old. The sit-up will strengthen the abdomen. We then move to the back. For the back, you can do the back raise, which is exactly the opposite of the sit-up. Then you could do the squat. The squat will strengthen the thighs. And then you could do the calf raise. The calf raise will strengthen the calves. So you have just four or five exercises and the entire body taken care of. Some of us may have access to gymnasiums. In gymnasiums, you have what is known as weight training equipment, a barbell or a dumbbell or a machine, for example. You could use exactly the same machines for strengthening the muscles. You could do, for example, a shoulder press. This will strengthen not only your arms, but also your shoulders. You could use a bench press. The bench press will strengthen your chest and also the arms. You could use the dumbbell curl or the barbell curl. This will strengthen your forearm and the bicep, the entire arm. Then, of course, you could do, as usual, the back hypertension for the back and the abdominal sit-up for the abdomen. Then you could do the squat. Use a barbell on your back and do the squat. And then you could use the calf raise. What is the benefit of doing exercises with weights? The benefit is the more you load the muscle, 
the stronger the muscle gets in a shorter amount of time. So therefore, if you go to a gym, and I strongly recommend this for people of all ages, including old people, including ladies, if you go to the gym, you will improve your muscular strength and shape twice as fast. Ladies, do gym work? Of course they should. Because in doing gym work, they tighten their muscles. Ladies, as a matter of fact, because of the estrogen hormone, shrink and turn slimmer when they exercise. Gentlemen, as a result of having the testosterone hormone, will get bigger muscles. So ladies need not worry at all in terms of becoming bigger when they exercise. They actually become slimmer. There are beyond this several other exercises that can be done in a gym and I'm sure that you will be talking to your trainers to enable you to do these more specific exercises. We next come to mobility. Mobility means the freedom of the joints to move. 37% of our population will have back ailments and arthritis and spondylosis and even osteoporosis. What is osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is the weakening of the bones. And why do bones become weak? Bones become weak because we do not load them. We spend the entire day sitting. When you sit, there is no weight on the body. When you stand, there is weight on the body. When you walk, there is weight on the body. When you run, there is weight on the body. This weight strengthens the bones. Because we do not stand so much as much as we should, nowadays we find that people are getting osteoporosis or brittle bones and your bones break even without falling. Now this is a dangerous trend. How do we improve our mobility? You improve mobility by doing joint movements. Freehand exercises. For example, take the body joints. A neck rotation for the neck. Shoulder rotation for the shoulders. Elbow rotations. The elbow bends for the elbows. Wrist rotations for the wrist. Finger exercises for the fingers. Remember that 50% of the body's joints are contained below the wrist and below the ankle. So it is important to move these joints. We then come to the spine. You can twist your spine as a spinal twist. You can bend your spine sideways as a sign bend. You can bend forward and touch your toes. All these will improve your spinal flexibility. Now in case you have back problems, you may not want to bend forward. You can then bend backwards. Bending backwards will improve your flexibility and will cause you no spinal discomfort. We then come to the hips. The hip is a ball and socket joint, the same as the shoulder is a ball and socket joint. But the hip is always moving in a forward direction. Move your legs sideways. In moving your legs sideways, you have what is known as the hip rotation exercise. This improves hip mobility. Your knees are a substitute, in a manner of speaking, for your elbows. They are both hinge joints. They can move 180 degrees, but the knees never move more than 20 degrees. When you walk, your knee movement is never more than 20 degrees. Make sure that you do a complete 180 degree knee movement at least once or twice a day. You may do this during exercise, that's a good idea. And then you have ankle rotation. Ankle rotation means to rotate the ankle the same way as you rotate the wrist. We have spoken about strengthening the muscles, we have spoken about mobility. There is another excellent way to improve mobility. But this excellent method is not only good for flexibility and mobility, it is also good for the entire internal organs. It is India's very own yoga exercises. Yoga is an excellent form of exercise. It not only benefits the external body, but also benefits the internal body. However, yoga will need to be learned through a guru or through a teacher. It takes time to learn this. All Western methods of exercise, especially mobility and freehand exercises, can be done within minutes. A yoga session would start with the Surya Namaskara or the Pranayama. 
and then you would do the ardhalasan the ardhalasan or leg lift half leg lift will benefit not only the muscles of the leg the muscles of the abdomen but all the abdominal region including the sexual organs and the digestive tract you could then move to the sarbangasana the sarbangasana is also known as the shoulder stand this is an inverted posture it will improve your circulation it will increase the blood flow to the brain it will activate the thyroid which means it will activate your metabolism you could then move to the halasan the halasan or the hal pose the plow pose the plow pose is important not only for the thyroid gland which is contained in the neck not only for the spine but also for extending the legs and stretching the muscles you would then go into an opposite position and that is the matsyasana the matsyasana is an exercise that is referred to as the fish pose the fish pose is expanding the chest it will improve respiration it will improve the intercostal muscles of the lungs it will improve your entire breathing we then have the bhujangasana the bhujangasana is known as the cobra pose this is extremely good for the lower back it stretches the entire abdomen it benefits the kidneys it benefits the thyroid the salabhasana is the locust pose you lie on your stomach and you raise your leg now this strengthens the lower back it strengthens the entire muscles of the abdomen and back region you then move on to the dhanurasana the dhanurasana is the bow pose it is stretching the entire back from the opposite side it strengthens the back so that you do not have any back ailments the opposite of the dhanurasana is the naukasana or the boat pose the naukasana would strengthen the abdomen the bakrasana is a good exercise to do a good yogasana to do this is the spinal twist it improves not only the spine and the nervous system it improves the entire digestive tract it mass it massages the internal digestive tract the pancreas the duodenum the large intestine the small intestine everything connected to digestion and then you have the paschimottasana or the toe touch stretches the spine compresses the entire digestive tract and is be beneficial to all the organs of the reproductive tract no yoga program is complete without the pranayama you could do the bhastrika you could do kapalbhati or you could do anulom vilom anulom vilom is an easy alternate nostril breathing you in through one nostril and breathe out of the other nostril not only does this purify your blood it relaxes the brain it brings down the brain waves it releases endorphins in the body in between asanas unlike western exercises where you exercise and increase the heart rate in yoga in between asanas we reduce the heart rate how do you reduce the heart rate you reduce the heart rate by doing the shavasana what is the shavasana the shavasana is to lie down like a corpse it is the primary meditative pose you lie down like a corpse and relax the entire body bring your heart rate back to normal and bring your breathing back to normal so what systems of exercise have we spoken about we have spoken about stamina exercises we have spoken about strength exercises whether weight training or free hand we've spoken about mobility exercises whether free hand mobility exercises or whether yogasanas so what is the formula for getting fit fit is f i t t f is frequency i is intensity t 
could either be time or timing. So how do you get fit? What is frequency? Frequency is how often should I exercise? Exercise is like sleep and food. You must do it every day. The minimum exercise is six days a week. Many people cut it down to three days. You may cut it down to three days if you do intense exercise activity. But low level comfortable fitness type activity such as walking etc should be done six days a week. So frequency of exercise is six days a week. We then come to intensity. How intensely should we exercise? The younger you are, the more intensely you exercise. The older you are, the more moderately you should exercise. How do you judge intensity? In terms of stamina, you judge intensity by breathing. For example, I go for a jog. I will stop jogging when I am breathless or I go for a walk. If I cannot speak comfortably while walking or I cannot breathe comfortably while walking, it means my intensity is too high. I should slow down. Older people above the age of 60 are advised to exercise moderately yet completely. Younger individuals must be fearless in exercise and they must exercise intensely. As far as stamina is concerned, we calculate this by our breath, as I've mentioned. As far as mobility and strength are concerned, we calculate this by repetitions. What is the intensity with which a young individual exercises? 10 repetitions of any exercise into 3 sets, which means 30 repetitions. What are the repetitions for an older person? For example, how many repetitions of a push-up should an older person do? Not more than 10. So older people should do 10 repetitions of a movement. Younger people may go up to 30 repetitions. It serves no purpose going, going beyond 30 and going less than 10 will, give you, will not give you the benefit that you require. So that is intensity. We now come to time. How long should we exercise? Your exercise timing minimum should be half an hour because this then allows the heart to be exercised completely. So the minimum time for exercise for anyone is a half hour. The maximum time is one hour. Exercising more than one hour is perhaps loading the body unnecessarily. So the minimum time to maximum time is between half an hour to one hour in terms of time. When should we exercise? What should the exercise timing be? In the morning, in the afternoon or in the evening? Mild exercises such as yoga and walking should be done in the morning. Why do we do this in the morning? Because when you get up in the morning, your heart rate is low and the body is relaxed. Therefore, you do light, easy, relaxing exercises. In the evening, your body is warm, the circulation is complete, your heart rate is high. You can then play games, you can do weight training, you can go for jogging, swimming, cycling, any intense exercise program. So the formula for fitness is frequency, intensity, time and timing. Keep in mind that you never start an exercise program without a warm-up. What is a warm-up? A warm-up is where you improve the circulation of the body by doing light exercises. For example, I want to go for a jog. I will first start with a walk. I want to go for a walk. I will st first start with some stretching exercises. Anything that brings the body up to a higher level of function and then exercise. What happens if you exercise without a warm-up? It is possible that you could get a cramp. It is possible that you may not feel comfortable. The same way when you end an exercise program, always end with a cool down. What is a cool down? A cool down is since you are breathing heavily, you breathe slowly. You do some light breathing exercises, a few easy stretch. This is known as a cool down. A few safety suggestions. It is important that you exercise 
safely. And there are a few thoughts. Number one, if you are below the age of 40, you may exercise comfortably. Start slowly and then exercise to intensity over a period of six weeks, which means that you reach your level of optimal exercises after gradually increasing your exercise. If you are above the age of 40, it is better to take your doctor's advice before exercising. Remember that there are many ailments like hypertension and diabetes that are silent. You may not know you have these ailments, arthritis. You may not know what you should do. So older individuals must most certainly take their doctor's advice. So the three safety suggestions are, one, if you are beyond the age of 40, you must have a brief medical check before you exercise. Below the age of 40, start your exercise program gradually. Everyone must start the exercise program with a warm-up and end with a cool down. One last thought. When you exercise, you are able to overcome your genetic cardiac risk factor, which means that if you are born with a family history of exercise, with a family history of cardiac problems, exercise can reverse your genetic syndrome. If in your lifetime you do not have a heart attack, you will then pass on the positive exercise gene to your children and they will be protected against the heart attack. So exercise is beneficial to the entire body. Of all the various health aspects, friends, whether it is nutrition or management of stress, the one important factor that I would suggest that you should not neglect is exercise. Thank you. So viewers, exercise for beauty, exercise for youth, and exercise for health. What then are we waiting for? Let's hit the track. Let's make sure that we exercise slow, safe, but sure.